Okay, we're back. Did a little testing today. <clears throat> a little checking today. Went ahead and took my old uh, potentiometer. Um, this little this little guy right here. Um, we're going to hook it back up. I got the motor to run. Um, being a little strange, but we're going to go ahead and do this. Um, I actually warmed this thing up under no load condition, um, quite hot, uh, quite fast, same as the other controller. Okay, um, but I did get this thing to run. Uh, controller got quite warm and, until it just stopped. Um, and the, uh, the old potentiometer is actually working, the new one is not. <laughs> Go figure. Um, this controller probably got pretty hot because of the... Uh, type of motor and we're shunting shunting the field um, instead of instead of running a separately excited on this and uh, as you can see we're shunting the field from here to here so it's getting full pack uh, voltage through that field instead of like 24 volts at 20 amps or something um, or 24 volts at 10 amp, 5 amps or whatever. Um, anyway, so I'm going to see. So, you can hear it spin up. So I'm going to spin it up. Doesn't have a lot of control on it, though. I am suspecting that it's the type of mode that the way we're doing the field and just shunting it. It just wants to just, just jump right up to speed. With a slight movement, and this thing just jumps. It just goes. Um, so how it will go under load, I don't know. Uh, but I do want to know, let you know that it is running. The controller does get fairly warm fairly quick. Turn that down just a little bit. Um, it does kind of make a high pitch sound. So even just that little bit, it just wants to shut. Um, getting a whine out of the motor, and I didn't get a whine out of the motor with another, the other controller like this. But I'm thinking it's the uh, the hertz of the motor and the motors or the, the controller and the motors becoming kind of like a speaker. Kind of kind of how I understood this whole process. Uh, so, not sure about that, but there's very, very little control, just barely touches it, man, this thing goes, as you can see, so, very slight movements, very, 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 very slight, and, uh, So a certain voltage and it's going to run up the speed. It's kind of like a, well, you put it on a certain speed and it jumps up to that speed and it'll hold that speed. So even under the load, it try and hold that speed. It's kind of how I think this thing works the way, the way I've got it wired up. So, but I think, I think it overtaxes the controller the way it's wired up. So in order to test the controller properly for this one, I will have to put the uh, a regular uh, series motor in it to see how, how it works. I'm sure it'll do a lot better and uh, a lot more control. Um, we can do that. I can get the GE motor, put the GE motor in. Uh, I do have, uh, I am going to put the Kelly back in. So there we go. The uh, thing just stopped and that went into a, an overheat. Um, situation. I do not have this motor here on a heat sink and it, the reason I don't have this motor on a heat sink is because it was requested by the person whom I'm testing it for that I not put it on a heat sink because he wants to see how quickly it goes into a thermal cutback. So with this particular motor just this unloaded thing right here that you can see it went into thermal cutback really fast, and it, it got, it got, it's hot. Um, it's almost too hot to touch, 
down at the base. And uh, just like the other uh, Kelly controller that I have, uh, did the same thing. The uh, SEPX controller didn't do that. Um, Kelly told me that the uh, SEPX controller needs to be powered with 72 volts uh, pack voltage, just like this one here. And I was only running it with 12 volts. And that may be where my problem is. So that's going to be going back in here soon. And, um, and we hope to uh, have a little bit more for you. And running the motor uh, just unloaded like that, the way I have it shunted, um, uh, the motor is really hot too. So, shunting the motor and just running it off a series um, style controller is not going to work. Uh, you're going to overheat things real fast. Um, you would seriously uh, overheat this motor and the controller. Um, and I don't know if you could even uh, keep it uh, cooled off fast enough. So, um, shunt motor needs a shunt controller or separately excite it, excite it with a low voltage and um, and be done with it so that's about that's my that's my new coming uh, information for tonight um, we got some really nasty weather out here I'm just out here again in the middle of uh, in between rainstorms and uh, also after dinner and after work um, so hopefully tomorrow after I get home from work um, we'll get the Kelly back on and um, and give that another spin and see what happens and even uh, and if it works we'll take her back out on the street so there we have it I will put this controller back on when we get the uh, series motor uh, back in the car so I'm pleased that we've made uh, some headway uh, controller does work um, not sure So one controller, anyway, so one potentiometer worked with the Kelly controller and the other potentiometer works with my Curtis um, clone. That's what I'm going to call it, just a Curtis clone. Um, strange, I have no idea why. And um, so I can take the one potentiometer, hook it up to the, hook it up to the uh, Kelly and it works just fine hook it up to this one, it doesn't work at all. So, go figure. So I know they both work. They are. It is working here. So, um, this is it for today, and we will uh, talk to you all later. And all the noise, and the traffic, and all that lovely stuff. Um, we will have more. Anyway, this is what we have. Um, we'll get the Kelly back in, the, the SEPEX controller back in, see if we can get it to run. Um, we think it's just a, an under voltage issue for the uh, controller power itself, not for the pack power, but for the controller um, needs pack power. So that's where we're at. We'll talk to you later. More to come.